If you're a serious graphic designer, then you probably have this book. This book is called Raster Systems or Grid Systems in English. It's all about how to design to the grid. And this is the Bible for anyone who wants to learn graphic design and how to grid things. But the problem is most of the times when we create grids as graphic designers like this, it isn't perfect. You see, we have a modular grid here. However, the baseline grid, which is where text sits and how we line everything up is not lined up. This leads us to this website here where we can actually create grids like so. And and everything from the baseline grid is in alignment. And you can download this. I'll link this in the description. But many times when graphic designers are creating grids for their work, they can't seem to make it fully harmonious. It never seems to work. If I zoom in, you'll see here we have a modular grid, but when I zoom in, we have a baseline grid. This is where text is supposed to sit. So how then do we make it so that this modular grid is perfectly in line with the baseline grid, giving us mathematically perfect or near perfect grid systems that we can use in our design work like so, where everything just flows and is harmonious. Now, the problem with grids is that most of the time when we create them, they look great. However, they don't align to the baseline grid, which is this guy here. It's all these blue lines and it's switched on in Adobe InDesign like so. Well, in this video brought to you by Squarespace, I'm gonna be showing you how to create the grids that you see in this book and how you can make them mathematically perfect to create a harmonious system. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna create a new document. I'm just gonna go ahead and create an A4 document, make it landscape, and I'm gonna switch off facing pages. This just means it's one page. If you're new to InDesign, it is an editorial design program, so you can do things like this, create PDFs. This is all about getting the design off like magazines and things like that, so you have good editorial design. Okay, we've got our blank document here. If you press W, you get this sort of preview panel there, easy enough. The first trick before doing anything with the grid is working out the size of our text and leading. So I'm just gonna draw a box like so and press this nifty fill the placeholder button. Nice, okay, we've got text. I know I want my font to be Helvetica New. So we're gonna go Helvetica New regular. That's way too large. I want it to be body text size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it down. I think that is a bit too small. I'm gonna bring it up to eight. Let's fill it with more placeholder text there. That looks good. Now, the trick with body text size isn't getting it very small. It's actually making it very readable. And there's a few ways we can ensure that this is readable readable to the average audience. What I'm looking for is creating a column and I want to make sure that my column has about seven to nine words on average on each line. And the way that I do this is easily go up to window, down to info, and it will give me this little box here. So when I click on a random line, it will tell me, hopefully, how many words there are on each line. So seven to nine words is what we're looking for. This means that the reader doesn't have to like read a long piece of information like this, where it becomes hard to read, but they are guided down. Okay, now the next thing, once you've worked out the sizing, we work out the leading, which is this panel here. This panel is very important. A lot of the time it will be automatically there, but I don't like to do that and it's not a good idea. What we wanna do is increase the leading to the point of where it easily flows, where it looks good to the reader. Something else I'm gonna do is turn off hyphenate, which makes life easier for me. And I'm going to increase the leading, make sure I can read this really nicely. Yeah, that looks good. So right now what we have is Helvetica New Regular in eight points and 11 point leading. Leading is the space in between each line. And it's really important to get this right because everything is actually based on the leading of our body text. Okay, next thing, I'm gonna go to preferences. So command or control K. I'm going to go into units and increments and I'm gonna change it for myself to points. The next step is we need to create the baseline grid. So if you wanted to know, the baseline grid is here, this button there. So if you zoom out, you won't see it. If you zoom in, you will. So if you can't see it, just zoom in and you'll see that it'll appear. You'll notice that our text isn't on the baseline grid. It's kind of just everywhere. So what we want to do is select our text and press this button under the paragraph section and it will force it to the baseline. And it looks good. However, it isn't correct. And that's because our margins, which is this pink line isn't aligned to the baseline grid. We need to make sure that the margins are in line with it. So one thing we need to do is make our baseline grid the same as the leading. So we do that by going into preferences again, so command or control K. We're gonna to go to grids. I'm gonna change my color to like charcoal. 
And then what I'm going to do is we're going to create an increment, not every 12 points, but 11 points, because that is what our leading is for our body text. We're going to decrease the view threshold so I can see this more often for you to 12.5. We're also going to press the start at zero points. We want it to start at the top of the page to make things easier. Once we've got that, press OK, and you'll see that it changes dramatically. So our body text now is aligned to the baseline grid. If it wasn't, it would look like this. If it is, it looks kind of similar, though. It's just moving ever so slightly. And it works well because now anytime we create text like so, the text will be automatically aligned to the baseline grid, which means that all the lines of text are in one line. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay, the only problem that we have now is our margins. They don't look correct. So what we need to do is keep that number 11 in our minds because that is the main number that we'll be working with all the way. And we're going to redefine the basic paragraph style to save that style. So what we want to do is on the top margin here, we want to make sure this top margin or all the margins fit together. So an easy way of doing this is by just clicking on your board, go up to the margins, and we're going to say 11 times 3 points. When we do that, it will bring our margins at the top and at the side three times the increments and that creates the margin there and it's perfectly on that baseline. However, we have a problem down here. This isn't in line. Now, this is where people get kind of shook up with this sort of thing. Now, if we look at the bottom here, though, it is not in line. Now, this is where people struggle in InDesign and to create the grids. But I'm going to show you a really easy method that I found on other videos and from other designers around there. This method is so easy. What we're going to do is draw a shape that is from this baseline to that baseline. Make sure it is the shape, not the stroke. And we're going to go to our info panel, which is really useful. And we're going to take the height into accordance. So 1.276. So with that, I can now take the margins and we can add or subtract 1.276. So with that, I'm going to go up to the margins here. Make sure that this is unchecked because we only want the bottom margin to be affected. And we're going to go plus 1.276, press OK. And you'll notice that our margin line at the bottom is perfectly in line with the baseline grid, which is great. Exactly what we want. Amazing. So we have our margins and we have our baseline grid working. Now it's time to create the grids. But before I do that, I wanted to talk about another grid system that can be used inside of our sponsor, Squarespace. If you're a graphic designer thinking about becoming one, a student, a seasoned designer, it doesn't matter who you are, you need a website to show your work. It's not good enough anymore just to have an Instagram profile or a social media handle for people to see your work. You need your own corner of the internet. Well, Squarespace is amazing, not only because it is easy to use, which always sounds like a bad thing. For us designers, it's a great thing because they have this new thing called a fluid engine, which allows you to edit the website within a grid very easily. You can take one of the thousands of fully customizable award-winning templates and edit it to your heart's content. You can move content wherever you like within this fluid panel. They also have sticky parts now, so you can actually stick certain elements to make your websites look amazing. You can create your own store to sell templates you can have an online course. I've put Logo Launch on there because it's so customizable. And best of all, if you click the link down below, you get a free trial of Squarespace and also 10% off your first purchase. You don't have to worry about domains, your email or anything like that. It sorts everything for you. It's so easy. So if you'd like to try Squarespace and give it a go and support the channel and do better for yourself, then click the link down below or use my code Patterson at the end of the checkout. Thanks for sponsoring. Okay, we've got the margins. We need to create some modular grids now. But first, I'm going to go and change the color of my guides by going to ruler guides and I'm going to change it to Fiesta because it's easier for you to see on video. Before we create the guides, we need to work out how many lines that are here because we need to find the factor. We need to be able to divide this by a certain number for it to work. So I'm going to click here select all and in my info panel it will tell me there's 48 lines which is great now if i type into google which is what i do for maths what does 48 divide by it'll give me the factors of 48 which is great we get 1 2 3 4 6 8 12 16 24 48 now sometimes you'll get numbers that don't work well and with that that means that you should change your leading size and your margin sizes too to get some good numbers there i'm going to choose number 8 and 12 i want this grid to be 8 and 12 but i could choose 4 and 6 i could choose 2 and 4 i could choose 16 and 24 or 12 and 24 any of these will work 
So now that we know that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to layout, we're going to create some guides, and I'm going to show you something really interesting. We're going to have eight rows. We're going to make sure that our gutter is not 12 points, but 11 points, which is our leading size. And then we're going to say 12 columns with 11 points there. We're going to make sure the fit guides option is to margins. And when I press OK, you'll notice it is still not aligned, which is frustrating for everyone. It's pretty annoying. Well, the reason why this happens is because we have an extra gutter in there. We have an extra gutter line happening. We need to take one away and we can do this quite easily by just changing the margin slightly. Watch. So you see, we have a margin of three at the top, kind of three at the bottom. For this to work, all we need to do is decide which margin we want to increase or decrease. I'm going to decrease the bottom down here and it's really easy. All I have to do is go to the margins bit here, make sure it's not linked. And I'm going to go to the end. Remember the lead size. We're going to go minus 11 points. And all we're going to do is we're going to add to this margin at the bottom to make it smaller. And all we're going to do is we're going to go plus 11 points. And there you go. It is decreased the margin, moved it up slightly by one. So we're missing one of those gutters. I'm going to move this up as well. So now when we go to layout, create guides, we're going to press eight for the number of rows. Make sure it's 11 points. We're going to go 12 and 11 points here and press OK. We have a perfectly and I mean perfect grid right there. Very nice, very modular. I'm going to go to view. We're going to go to guides. We're going to lock the guides. Now I can add my text in here like so. There's a lot of line work here, but do not fret. Add some placeholder. There we go. I'm actually going to move this text box down ever so slightly. And now we can have some columns if we wanted to. We could do this. We can increase this, fill it. We can change the text frame to 11 points in width. We can create a couple of text frames or we can create three if we wanted to. And now we have a perfectly aligned grid where it works all the way there. And the great thing about this is that we can actually add images and everything else that we need like so. Okay, the final thing, how do we make it so we have titles like these? What do we do with these type systems? Well, one way I like to do this personally is by creating a text box. Let's just call it title, heading, just some random words. We're going to create a new paragraph style. What I'm going to do is instantly go to my text here and I'm just going to times it by two. So it's 16 and I'm going to change it from regular to medium. And then as well as that, if we need to, we can detach it from the baseline grid if we need to. So we can like move it to wherever we need to, but I don't need to do that for here because right here I can just add it here, make sure it fits to the grid. And from here, what we can do is add some frames for so some images. We can add some more text down here. I can add this juicy picture of me and copy this to show the effect of what we're having. And we have perfectly aligned work all the way through. So that is how you actually create a mathematically perfect grid. If you enjoyed this video, please press that subscribe button because I'm going to be posting more about little tips like this to help any new or advanced graphic designer out there do better in their design work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye. Pssh.